Hey everyone, and thanks for checking in. You found a very thorough FUD tutorial. We've got a lot to cover today, so let's get started. But first, a quick note. If you'd like to make pho but don't have time for the lengthy bone broth making process, you can instead use an instant beef broth of your choice. Relevant information to that process starts pretty early on in the video, so hang tight and thanks for watching. And we start with beef bones to make our bone broth, knuckles, marrow bones, joints, femurs, etc. They're going to give our broth a thick body and a gelatinous quality as well as the commonly praised health benefits you might get from a bone broth. Marrow and collagen heavy pieces are best for this as you could consider marrow as great for flavor and nutrients and collagen will give us that gelatinous mouthfeel that we're looking for. Here's the star of our show tonight. I got my hands on some oxtail which is exactly what it sounds like. Ultra gelatinous is going to do what our beef bones were planning on doing but on a whole other level. The beef texture when braised and simmered is similar to a chuck roast as you'll see later in the video when it starts falling off the bone. But in addition to the meat's texture, it's accompanied by a melty, savory, indulgent, fatty beef flavor. That's quite a fantastic experience. Next, we're going to blanch the bones for about 10 minutes to get rid of any unwanted impurities. Here's where bone broth purists might chime in and they might say roasting the bones is a superior method, which I won't disagree with as it's great for bringing out the bone's beefy flavor. However, blanching is more common than roasting when making pho. Blanching instead of roasting is also going to keep our broth cleaner and clearer, which I'm required to mention should be your primary goal when making pho broth. And now we're skimming. This step is only done to keep any excess impurities off of our bones as we remove them to blanch and rinse them. While I'm rinsing the bones, I'm going to ask the pho purist to cover their ears. This advice is for the layperson who doesn't have 6 to up to 48 hours or the proper tools to make bone broth from scratch. You can use an instant beef stock or bouillon of your choice and skip all of the blanching, roasting, and skimming. My biggest recommendation with this route, which I do often take because making pho from scratch is more of a special occasion at my home, is that to use instant beef broths sparingly as the beef flavor is not really the star pho, as we'll see later. So just a subtle beef flavor is what we're going for. While blanching and rinsing our oxtail is next, I wanted to also mention that you can make pho broth just using bones for their marrow and collagen. Oxtail, at least where I live, is pretty expensive. This amount here would have been about $30 had it not been gifted to me by a friend. Roast friendly cuts like chuck roast are a slightly cheaper alternative that gives great beefy flavor as well. You can also forego stewing meat in the broth entirely and just serve our bone broth, poured over thin cut slices of your choice of steak. However, your broth won't have as strong of a beef flavor without simmering cuts like oxtail or chuck in it. I've got my blanched oxtail and bones in a 12 quart pot of cold water. I'm going to gently bring it up to a simmer. While this is coming up to temperature, we're going to roast and char some onion and ginger. I'm using a butane burner to char my onions and ginger. This can be done in a ripping hot oven until nicely charred. If you're thinking there's an easier way to char ginger, you're absolutely right. I'll be adding a grill basket to my shopping list. Usually they're used for grilling vegetables and fish on a grill outdoors, but one would be perfect for this use indoors. And again, this could have been done in an oven, but I like to play with my butane burner any chance I get. An important note, while I was charring my onion and ginger, I was keeping a close eye on my 12 quart pot, making sure that it never came to a full boil. I'm using one of my most cherished kitchen tools here. Water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit, so the perfect simmer for this broth is going to be just under that temperature. After rinsing the charred vegetables, we now have the bones, oxtail, ginger, and onion mingling together. I'm going to let this roll for two hours. Optional steps. Some recipes call for a splash of vinegar to bring out the bones flavors and nutrients. Some put fish sauce, palm sugar, and salt in now to flavor the meat and the broth early. My preference is to wait until later in the process so I can control the flavor. What we don't want to do, and what a lot of recipes get wrong for small batches like this, is add the spices too early. This broth will simmer down from 12 quarts to about 4 quarts. The spices, which I'll show you here next, will be very bitter and concentrated for that length of time with this amount of broth. 
We're going to check on our broth periodically while the oxtail cooks. This first skim was only about 30 minutes in. While I'm skimming here and have the chance, I wanted to mention that the bones I'm using today had quite a bit of meat left on them. I did consider trimming them down. The thought behind this is that too much meat simmering for too long could become bitter and could cloud our broth. I chose to leave the meat on for a little extra beef flavor in this case. My two hour timer went off and the oxtail was perfectly cooked. I then removed the onions as they've given up all the flavor they were willing to and if we leave them in for too long they will break down and cloud our broth. Now the oxtail is off to blanch to stop the cooking process and help retain its color keeping it from graying. Aside from the wonderful aroma that's been filling your home for the past two hours, this is one of our first satisfying milestones. The oxtail meat should easily pull from the bones revealing a pulled pork or chuck roast equivalent tenderness and a buttery soft melt in your mouth rendered fat. After removing the meat from the oxtail bones, I put the bones back in the broth and continued to simmer for another three hours. This is the point where you could let the bones go for as long as you'd like to build your bone broth base. Fish sauce, palm sugar going in and we're skimming the thick layer of fat from the broth. While the bones continue to simmer, we are ready to talk about the spices. We're going to dissect this spice package to go over all the components. If you can find this package, you're in luck and can save some time and money. Buying all the spices separately is great too, but I've found that these packages are consistently fresh. The exact recipe amounts will be in the description. We have a tea bag or cheesecloth to hold our spices, coriander seeds, clove, I figured out what this thing was. Cardamom pods. Now cardamom pods go by quite a few different names, most I am afraid to pronounce so I will put them on screen and on the shopping list in the description below for what to look for. Cinnamon. Star anise. Now you want to be careful not to add too much. It is one of the primary flavors of our fall broth but can be very strong. Again the recipe amounts will be in the description. Fennel. Now a surprising amount of pho recipes omit this ingredient considering how important it is. For me, it is one of my favorite flavors in our pho broth. And an extra cardamom pod because I like the smoky flavor. And now we arrive at my first big mistake. After putting the spices in the tea bag and tying it incredibly tight, I realized I forgot to toast the spices. Off camera, I painstakingly opened this bag and toasted them over medium heat until aromatic and added them back. To the tea bag. After three hours of simmering has passed, we can finally add the spices. Adding the spices about an hour before serving is optimal. My current cooking time is now five hours in. Your current time will depend on how long you decided to simmer your broth after adding fish sauce and palm sugar. Now that the spices are in, we need to start prepping for our bowls. Rice noodles are up next. You're looking for a small size noodle. The ingredients on the package should only be rice and water. If you see mung bean or bean thread on the ingredients list, you've got the wrong noodle. We're going to soak the noodles in room temperature water for about an hour or until the noodles can easily wrap around a finger. This here is a pasta colander. It's great for blanching and in this case, we'll be quickly cooking our soaked rice noodles. I cannot recommend having at least one of these in your kitchen as they come in handy so often. I'll include a link to purchase in the description below. The colander is optional. If you don't have one, you can cook the noodles directly in a pot of boiling water. However, they cook very quickly in just a minute or two, so be quick to remove them. After very carefully testing the doneness of the noodles with chopsticks, or in my case, my poor fingers, we're going to blanch them in ice cold water to stop the cooking and reserve for later. It is veggie and herb prepping time, thinly sliced jalapeno, cilantro, otherwise known as coriander, leaves and stems are my preference. The green tops of spring onions, I often will put thinly sliced scallion whites in mine as well. Thinly sliced onion, yellow or white is fine. Lime, cutting around the core to make squeezing easier. I couldn't find Thai basil in stock, so I went with sawtooth coriander. We're going to simply tear the leaves when building into our bowl. Finally, we're going to have bean sprouts ready to be rinsed immediately before placing into our pho bowl. Thinly sliced steak. And remember that steak I forgot to tell you about that we put in our freezer to firm up about an hour ago to make slicing as thin as possible easier. Your preference of steak is completely up to you. Tonight, in addition to our oxtail, I'm having thinly sliced New York strip. This next step is optional as some might ladle the broth from the large stock pot directly into their pho bowls. My preference is to remove the bones with tongs and strain into a smaller stock pot. This one here is 5.5 quarts. 
And we finally made it. Whether you decided to simmer your bones for much longer or not, the broth is ready to be tweaked to your taste with more fish sauce, sugar, possibly spices. If you find that it's getting close to serving time and the spices aren't cutting through as much as you'd like, as was the case with my Funite, you can add additional toasted spices directly to the broth, like so, and use a colander when pouring your broth into the bowls. Adding the spices without cheesecloth expedites the steeping process, so you want to be careful not to overstew these. And we have our noodles, spring onion, cilantro, jalapenos, thinly sliced steak, onions, our oh-so-tender oxtail, sawtooth coriander, bean sprouts, Using a colander to catch our spices, we pour our boiling hot broth over our noodle bowl. If you let your cheesecloth wrap spices stew for longer than I did, you might not need a colander to catch these free range spices that we added back in for an extra kick. The boiling hot temperature of the broth will cook our thinly sliced steak to a perfect soft and chewy medium rare. Hot chili oil, a squeeze of lime, and this bowl was off to my dinner table after a very long but completely worthy Day of cooking. And there we have it. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch you next time.